Welcome back to episode 172 of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, Iman. What's going on, dude? And on the sticks, we got TJ. Hello. And finally, we get to speak to Aaron from the Foxy team, one of the co-founders. Welcome, Aaron. Appreciate you joining us. Hey, guys. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm really excited. Love you guys' channel. You guys do amazing stuff. So thank thank you, guys. I appreciate it, man. So, yeah. so yeah, uh, let's get started talking about bitmaps. I, I think anytime we talk about bitmaps on the channel, it gets a ton of views, a ton of comments, mm. and um, and obviously you're working on Bitverse. So, Foxy, tell us the origin story of how you got started with 3D building, 3D modeling, uh, virtual world, and how you got started in crypto as well. So, just give yeah. us a, a how it all how it all led to bitmaps, right? Yeah, because. <laughs> That's a weird journey all of us yeah. kind of have been on. Somehow we've all ended up becoming bitmap builders, right? Yeah, so right. <laughs> it is interesting to yeah, that, that is true. To understand how we all got here. Sure. Right? So yeah, tell us a little bit about how you got here. Okay, so um, our whole entire journey starts before Elon Musk actually did the purchase for, for Twitter. Mm-hmm. So um, my, my friend who I worked with a long time over at eBay, um, he's, he's a really good dev. Um, I, I actually worked in the safety department, mm-hmm. um, the, the part where, part where we clients would email us. And then, and I was the team lead for making sure everyone was getting the responses that they needed. If they're having any issues, you know, making sure no one was doing any wire transfer, all that crazy stuff that back in the day, you know, that was, that was, uh, prohibited, mm-hmm. right. Um, making sure that everyone used only PayPal because that's actually the only safe form of doing purchases back then. Yeah. Um, so we, we actually began this whole entire journey right when Elon Musk, uh, well, well, actually before he was tempting, uh, tempting to make the Twitter purchase mm-hmm. and what we wanted to do, we wanted to have something focused, uh, a social media app focused towards, you know, uh, crypto people, you know, people who have, uh, NFTs and, and, and like, like I said, it was before that. So it was before, you know, BRC 20, it was before ordinals. And what we, we really wanted was to be able to actually showcase people's NFTs, NFT collections. Mm-hmm. So for example, you know, um, you're holding, you're, you're holding uh, an NFT, you'd actually be able to click on your profile and actually show a case that, you know, you actually yeah. click on someone's profile and actually see their collection, which is, which would be really cool. Let's say someone posts something and then you just click on it and see you know, that what they actually have instead of, you know, just having the little uh, profile, you know, like a little, like a little, uh, NFT, you know, frog or NFT uh, box, like like the one that I'm wearing right now. Sure, sure. You can actually legitimately actually show that you have that, um, which we thought would, would be pretty cool. So um, uh, with that, we continued. You know, so like, go on the, onto our website. You can actually see that feature. It's called the the Web Three Gallery. Mm. Um, so so from there, everything just uh, started expanding. You know, and we actually have one of the guys who. Who's who actually has a uh, a small little little project game, um, and it's actually a, sh- a first sh- first person shooter game, and that's actually going to be coming to Foxy as well. He wants to implement implement it to uh to our social media, so it's it's not it's not like 100% only social media. You know, it's just yeah. it's just the platform where sure. we have where people can actually share their content, uh, share what they own, mm. uh, play games. Um, we also have a uh, Foxy uh, Foxy AI, which is ChatGPT. Wow. Uh, I think it's a 3.0 now. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's going to be that. That should be actually online uh, by next week. Oh, nice. So this um, is- and then yeah. and then, and so 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 like the road to uh, how we got into Bitmap. <laughs> that's that's what that's a funny one because uh, what happens is this NFTs when NFTs were around. Um, I, I was I was really I, I used to I loved all crypto, you know, but I was never I never. Um, I feel bad saying this, but I never got into like the whole NFT hype. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always thought it was really stupid, like the little <laughs> yeah. JPEGs. You Don't know, the feel JPEGs that are worth one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, you're not alone in that sentiment for sure. I yeah. think uh, we, we're, we're definitely on record of missing a lot of boats in the NFT space because of our own, uh, I don't know, uh, apprehension, or we didn't get it mm-hmm. either. <laughs> we yeah. didn't think like art would become this ginormous yeah. sixty right. billion dollar force. Yeah. Yeah, typically art is like, uh, I mean, I guess people obviously like art intuitively, but but no, no way that we would have connected art and a mania, crypto mania. Right. Together. I didn't. I didn't think some force out there, <laughs> aka Yuga Labs, uh, yeah. <laughs> would have concocted like, the perfect packaging, the perfect marketing narrative to kind of like galvanize a whole you know new industry, mm-hmm. right? So 
So yeah, don't don't feel bad. <laughs> we also uh, had similar sentiment. Yeah. So I and then I saw these things going for hundreds of thousands of dollars and some mm-hmm. millions of dollars. You know. Yeah. Um, like the, the cheese one, I I forgot the name of that cheese one. It was, so it was just it was just like things that just blew me away, you know. And I was like, this is so this is so stupid. Like, how how is this actually even working? How is this even yeah um, sustainable? I suppose. Anyways, so I missed the whole thing, and then at the end of it, you know, like towards the very end, I actually started getting interested in it, and it was just you know falling off the cliff. And then, so I feel like I missed like the whole entire fun, you know, mm. of actually you know getting into something and you know trying it out. Like I was. Uh, I don't know how to explain it to you, uh, but I felt I, I, I don't know. It's just I, I should have uh, I should have probably uh, studied it a little bit more and gotten into it. So then when I and then so and then when my friend presented me to you know the ordinals, yeah. actually um, uh, I actually was given one of uh, I was actually given a bit frog. So hmm. uh, from one of my friends, he actually has five of them. So he gave me one of them, and uh, and that's actually how I actually end up getting into ordinals and. I felt like this, like, oh wow, man, this is this is maybe the second opportunity, yeah. you know, to get into yeah. NFTs that yeah. I actually missed. Yeah. So that is how I actually got into ordinals, and then from or, from ordinals, and then Bitmap came along, and that was just such a an amazing an idea, you know. I, I felt like Bitmap was, um, like a sandbox, you know. Yeah. It, it, I felt like if someone could actually just build something on there, and um, just in the, from their own creative minds, um. And, and yeah, that's an also another one also that I actually didn't get into. So mm-hmm. um, I really love the whole Bitcoin ecosystem. I really think it's it's really amazing um, what everyone has been developing. Um, these devs have been really great at developing these 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 amazing platforms for people to you know just build around. Yeah. So uh, what's your like technical background? Are you a developer? Or are you kind of like running the show? Like what, what's what's your part in uh, on the Foxy team? So as, as a founder, I actually had the whole idea of, you know, the social media app, um, getting, getting some of the, some of the other, other key members together to join this. Mm. Um, we actually have four developers, uh, two founders. Nice. I'm one of the founders. Wow. Um, so I basically have some of the, some of the creative ideas, not, not everything, of course, but sure. just some of the, the basic ideas. I actually started the, started it with the idea and then got some of my friends behind me who are actual um, developers to do these, to do these things. We're all doing this basically for free. So this has actually just been a really, really good fun hobby. And we're just trying to get this platform, you know, to take off. So that way, you know, not even necessarily take off, but we should just get like a good community, you know, to be active here and just have fun. Sure. And, you know, everyone, everyone pitch in and do something cool, creative. Um, let's say someone has a great idea and they want to implement something that's theirs into our, uh, Foxy social. Um, they're, they're more than free to do so, you know? Yeah, and um, so I, I guess if anyone's listening or watching to the, watching this video, um, and they don't know anything about bitmaps, it's essentially bitmaps is is the metaverse on Bitcoin. And this this guy Bitoshi, he said every block that's being added to the Bitcoin blockchain is really a district in the metaverse, and every transaction that makes up the block are parcels in that metaverse. And in about two weeks um, after we did our initial video, it minted out and 800,000 blocks were basically claimed yeah. by people on the Bitcoin blockchain. And, and to be, I guess, a little more clear, there's real, there's nothing of any like 3D elements like correct. embedded within these blocks. They're literally blank canvases, right? Yeah, it's yeah. literally a blank canvas. Yeah. And, uh, and, so, and so projects like Foxy, they're coming in and say, hey, we can build on top of this uh, starting point. And... Um, what Bitmap represents is really a starting point for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And we get to, you know, the community gets to select, you know, the operating system, what are the the, techno- <laughs> the technology stack that's going to, you know, represent your build. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, it's people are going to be potentially owning parcels and then, you know, existing within this uh, this district that uh, that we get to put together. So. Um, what was your first, uh, how did you first hear about bitmaps, um, you know, like in, in this whole like mania thing that occurred just a few weeks ago? I, w- I wouldn't say I actually, I, I, I didn't hear about bitmap. That was, that was one of the other founder. That was, oh, okay. that was my friend, the okay. other founder who actually heard of bitmap and, and he showed it to me. And, and then, you know, whenever he, whenever he started talking about Blockamoto and like what this was, I instantly envisioned like a sandbox. Mm-hmm. And then he showed me like the numbers of, um, the bitmaps, you know, it's like, how much is it? 
eight hundred and how much thousand now? About eight hundred thousand. Yeah. So, and then when I saw that, I I, I just I like, envisioned like a like like a square mm-hmm. uh, place where people can actually just zoom in, you know, and they have what whatever they're holding would be somewhere where you can just click on and actually zoom in. And they came up with the idea of you know actually like going inside of there. You know, it was just it was just like a conjunction, I guess, of you know people having some ideas here and there. Nice. Because like our bitverse now, uh, have you guys explored our bitverse yet? Yes, I actually jumped in, and um, I'm look. We're actually kind of looking at uh, the Twitter feed, and I see that there's a video here where you're kind of flying around. I see the uh, bit uh, miner there, and it's kind of red with a bunch of buildings around it. So that's that's the one that we're looking at. Right, right. Um, but so let me explain that really quick there, yeah. if you don't mind. Sure. All right, so as you guys can see in that in the middle, the very middle, there's a more of a whitish building. That's actually the ordinal gallery. So if if uh, someone in the community wishes to share some of their ordinal collections that, or the project that they're that they're coming up with, you know, their, their art gallery, they can actually show it. Up, they can actually showcase it on in our ordinal gallery. Mm, and right. then the other the other equipment in the middle is that little funny looking one, yeah. that white one. Yeah, it looks like a swing around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we want to actually have it like a laser beam that's actually hitting the ground and, you know, debris is actually flying out. Nice. So it actually looks more, you know, it looks, it looks cooler and more like a miner, right? Yes. Uh, that's the bit miner. So by holding, by holding um, a bitmap, people will be eligible to have, you know, the bit miner for free. Everyone who has a bitmap uh, can have a bit miner for free. And what it does is automatically just going to be collecting bits and you'll be able to exchange those bits for something useful here in the future. Um, perhaps maybe some free ordinals, um, maybe some free, you know, Lamborghini car or something, something hmm, skin, sure. or maybe even converting it into the actual foxy token. Um, whenever we, we do launch a token. Oh, nice. So we're going to, so people can collect the bits and for the future, you know, it's not going to be like ridiculous amounts, you know, it has to be, it has to be something that's sustainable. Right. Sure. So, so, uh, we were, and, we were uh, on, a on a Twitter space not too long ago. And I think you and I were chatting a little bit and uh, you were talking, I think you were talking about the bit miner uh, at the time, but anyway, I think, I think you were on the call, but, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I had mentioned that, you know, um, this bit miner, we, we consider it more like a, like a little app that can, people can purchase and deploy within their own virtual world. And the whole idea was mm-hmm. to think of it as like a composable piece. So basically, a, a, it's like a Lego block that you kind of remove, and then you can add that Lego block, you know, on some other world. And once you install it, that bit miner is now functioning in that world, which which essentially that you didn't have to build, right? So essentially, you're building this little application so that others can buy and deploy. And so what happens is with this model, uh, you are expanding your brand to to other virtual worlds and we feel like this this model is going to be a little bit more sustainable than actually creating worlds for each each i guess bitmap Mm. Um, i want to get your thoughts on like Mm -hmm. that concept and you know get your your feedback on something like that yeah yeah so um i really i really love that idea that you were you were sharing i think we're on another call that day um yeah it's definitely it's definitely possible for us to implement that and perhaps even uh put it on other people's projects as well you know uh, yeah. as an nft so a bit miner uh, nft and we can even offer bit miner upgrades to to uh, to the bit miner yeah 100%. Um, yeah that's definitely that's definitely that's that's actually a very very easy and possible to do yeah so uh how are these bits generated again just to get a little bit into the details of the the mechanism of this miner right because obviously it's cool people will probably want to yeah. own it and have it just because of the aesthetic of it right? and it's it's like a passively generating unit yeah. right Correct. Yeah, you're extracting some sort of new value, right, from your bitmap mm-hmm. in, in an actual you know, okay. 3D immersive space. So you said you're actually there's a laser beam in the future, extracting bits. <laughs> right. When you say bits, is is there an actual <laughs> like uh, unit or some kind of component within like uh, the information or the data of your of your block that contributes to that or anything like that? So bitminer is going to be uh, linked to the 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 bytes on the block. And it's going to be extracted like every 24 hours. Now, when I say this, the laser and you know hit it and then the ground and the debris is fine. That's just for you know aesthetics. You know, just to make it to make it look sure you know, a little more fun yeah. and interesting. Sure. Yeah, it reminds me of I don't know if you've seen the movie uh, Man of Steel. Is that a Superman movie? Of course it is, dude. Okay. Of course. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah. So so man, in Man of Steel, if you haven't seen it, there's like this uh, alien ship that looks exactly like well, very similar, mm. but it's hovering in a, above a city and it's like pulsating this huge laser into the ground and it's gen- it's basically terraforming Earth. Oh, really? Yeah. So that the Kryptonians can can breathe right mm-hmm. on uh, on Earth. But anyway, it looks kind of like that. Um, wh- so just to go a little bit deeper, um, we've we released a video called DMT, Digital Matter Theory. I also, in that same space, I was talking a lot about that. Yeah. But um, but the whole idea is t- to apply it to this bit miner, which I think is very cool, is imagine Foxy comes and, and recognizes a pattern within the Bitcoin blockchain, right? Mm-hmm. Where some of these blocks have this pattern, right? In general, like let's say most of the blocks have this pattern. Um, a pattern could be, you know, looking at the transaction ID and finding three consecutive letter A's, right? Mm-hmm. So this represents uh, a non-arbitrary token. This token exists embedded into Bitcoin's blockchain, and Foxy was the one who found it, right? They they recognized this pattern, they claimed it, and now it's it's Foxy's token, right? Mm. Under this scheme. So so humor me on this, Aaron. Uh, so once Foxy discovers this, now Foxy can say, this token that I discovered, the only way you can extract this token is if by purchasing this bit miner. Hmm. Purchase it, deploy it on your bitmap, mm-hmm. and you'll extract all of the t- Foxy tokens that are, are there, right? And, um, and so, you know, applying this digital matter theory with, like, this game theory of, like, having, you know, a component to extract it because... That that's the only way to extract that that token. Mm. You know wh- what's what do you think about that and like that concept and extrapolating it you know across the board? Yeah, so I think uh, some of the devs had 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 listened to our previous conversation because we yeah they, I think they loved it. We're already on this idea that you were that you were sharing with us before. Nice. Um, but yeah, uh, we are leveraging uh, various details on the blockchain mm. uh, to range the virtual experience as well. So beautiful. Um, we are going to be based the bit miner free and it's going to be, we're going to do that, uh, the version for it's going to be purchasable NFT upgrade. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Because you know, one of, one of the notable things that we, we have like a huge opportunity with this whole bitmap thing and, and, and Bitcoin yeah. is the idea of these non arbitrary tokens, because so many mm-hmm. people have come up with like a bitmap token or whatever it is and it's arbitrary and, like people are front running in and stuff. And I think there was an, another proposal, I think through 8-Bit, mm-hmm. where there's another bitmap token, but it's basically a single token that represents your, um, I guess if you own a bitmap, you own this BRC20 token or whatever right. it is, tap yeah. token, mm-hmm. um, which is cool because all of us own bitmaps and therefore we own the non-arbitrary tokens, right? So I think mm-hmm. being right. able to add this like game theory where you have like this bit miner um, associated with this like digital matter theory, I think there's there's a lot that can be built from there. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, and for us right now, uh, it's bits. For now, for now, it's bits now. Yeah, sure. uh, and in the bit first. Yeah, they could, they could always and, be uh, remember, expanded, right? Like you could always add on more potential yeah. commodities, if you if you will, or elements. Yeah. Whatever you want to call these, right? And uh, yeah, if you do associate some sort of on chain component to. I guess what actually exists or what is extractable yeah. from the bitmaps that you own. Yeah, I mean that that in itself, so, I think can attract a lot of uh, engagement from like the bitmap community, right? You want to activate and deploy your your three D environment oh, yeah. so you can hundred percent, you know, actually begin mining. Right, it's a whole new mechanism of of mining. Right? Yeah, I can see jumping into one of these worlds and it's like a, a vast sea of like these miners like <laughs> going ham at, at each of the parcels. That would be nice. That would look cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, but right, right. Go like ahead. what you're saying right there for us, it's the it's bits. You know, it's it's in the yeah. bitverse, and we're, we'll be able to convert the bits. You know, for the foxy tokens in the future, and the bits you can be used. You know, for purchasing uh, the building inscriptions, for example for constructions. And that's another thing I also wanted to mention to you guys is that uh, we're making some adjustments to to our map, like the one that you guys see right there in the middle, yes. the ones that's on the outside of the middle, that's the that's the map that we're gonna have, that's gonna be, uh, uh, you're gonna be able to build yourself. So you're gonna be able to, uh, for example, pick like the wall that you wanna build, sure. uh, the material that you wanna place on the ground and you actually make, make your own whole entire building and things like that, yeah, build your cool. own city. So that's gonna be kind of interesting. Yeah, that's great. Yesterday, me and Will were dabbling a lot into uh, 
Roblox. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> really trying to like see if there's some sort of like secret ingredient there as yeah. far as like, why is every like child on earth engaged <laughs> with Roblox? Like yeah. what are they doing that's so tremendously unique or original and yeah. couldn't really find anything. All yeah. they did was simply provide <laughs> tools, right? They have 46 million daily active users. Mm -hmm. That's oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, and and uh, I was listening to I think it was Bankless. They were talking about Frentech. They have basically a hundred thousand signups. Okay. For Frentech. Yeah. Right. Hundred thousand versus forty six million kids playing games. <laughs> yes. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> it's quite the gap for yeah. sure. Yeah. And Frentech, I guess, is like one of the first killer products yeah. of Web three so far. Right? Yeah. For this cycle. Or yes. Apps. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, that's, that's the, insane. So the opportunity <laughs> about is the Roblox, huge. that's pretty crazy. Yeah. The opportunity is huge with bitmap because I mean, ultimately bitmap can become, you know, a pseudo Roblox where people come and build, right. That's, that's exactly what Roblox is. So, yeah. Um, all right. So let's now we were talking about these like little applications, this bit miner, but to accomplish something like that, mm -hmm. it's non-trivial, right? Because you have like, I'm a, so Chris and expector and you have, you know, in the future, tons of other builders building out these virtual worlds, each one with a different technology stack, um, like Unity and mm, Unreal, right, right. Uh, using JavaScript, using a uh, new technology called MML, Metaverse Markup Language. So uh, let's let's first start with like, what, what technology stack are you using? Um, and, um, you know, let's, let's talk through is like, how, how do we have like this composable, uh, interoperable environment? Um, and you know, this will probably get too technical for, for the audience, but I th I'm, I'm really interested in like what your thoughts are. So let's start with like what, what your technology stack for, for building out this world is. So our Bitverse is actually being run by, uh, the unity engine. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I guess you're starting with unity engine. Um, are, is it gonna have like an SDK? Um, or are you guys building sort of like a builder for people to come in and just like build out their, their virtual environment? Yeah, that's going to be more of, that's going to be a more technical okay. question for the, for the actual devs who actually mess with, with that part. Cause I, I honestly don't. Um, but I can say is that we do support Unisat wallets, um, okay. and, um, you know, like a gameplay. So you can use your, your wallet, just like a sign in, um, yeah, totally hear you, you know, because, um, you know, we, we like thinking about this stuff essentially because if you look at the, the internet where we have multiple operating systems, for example, like uh, Mac OS, and then we have windows developers build essentially applications that are uh, essentially, you know, interoperable, meaning you can build an application once you write it once and you can run it on Mac OS and windows. And what we're seeing here with like the virtual environment is people are using different technology stacks and it makes it difficult for developers to pick a technology to build on top of, right? Because we're essentially selecting silos. Mm. So, um, so what I guess our mission is to make less silos by talking about, you know, you know, you know specific technology stacks where it makes it easier for developers to build content that can be deployable in, in all these virtual worlds. So, that's kind of how we're thinking about it. And, uh, and what, what you're building here is like pr pretty amazing stuff. Like once people come in and see what you got going the, and able to use your tools to kind of build out the environment, people s will inherently start guiding towards like this, this whole cohesive mm -hmm. concept that we keep talking about for yeah several years. And the whole social side is important too. I think, I think, yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, Foxy definitely has a good position on I guess providing some sort of social communication layer for the whole bitmap ecosystem, right? Because we've seen a lot of other like, I guess metaverse um, companies, projects. Like we, we were looking into something called IMVU recently. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's a it's a three D virtual experience, right? It's a platform where you can create your avatars. You can log into these three um, D roles that people are building, and um, interact socialize mm -hmm. right and then part of the core experience of that is there is a social media presence right where your identity actually matters and your you know your your history everything you've talked about before as far as like showcasing your i guess your own personal provenance as far as like w what you've done in the metaverse space more more specifically your nfts or mm -hmm. ordinals that you own and all that so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i guess like what is the next step as far as 
um, yeah, bringing so, Foxy so, and, so, and, and you know merging it with the bitmap ecosystem a little bit more cohesively. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. So, like like I said, on the next upgrades, we're gonna be able to you're you're going to be able to customize your own cities and things like that. Uh, another great thing that we're trying to bring here, guys, uh, which is really really awesome, because I, I I mentioned that we have the Foxy AI, right? Yes. That's that's gonna be here. Hopefully, it's gonna be on on the dot social um, mm -hmm. by next week. Uh, we're going to be attempting as well to put in uh, NPCs with with AI. That would mm -hmm. be something mm -hmm. really really interesting. So could you imagine actually going up to an NPC and actually asking him a question? You know, he'd actually be able to answer. It, you know, not just something stupid and that's just sitting there with a, you know three answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, that's something else. That's that's something else we're trying to innovate. Interesting. Um, to to bring more attention towards you know this whole entire ecosystem you know of Bitmap and uh, you know our our own version which is the Bitverse. And um, remembering that uh, uh, as of right now, so all 800,000 plus uh, bitmaps, they all have this this free little world that they can use as of right now. Mm -hmm. um, they all have, you know, the bitminer that they can use and they all have access to the ordinal gallery. And um, we, we are the first ones to actually have the game up. Uh, I'm sorry. We're the first ones to have, actually have uh, the met the metaverse for um, on this on Bitcoin. So we're, we are the first ones. So I love to uh, to brag about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, being first is is huge. Just because uh, you start you start being the leader in like the conversations here. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really good. Not uh, to mention, not to mention that there's it's absolutely free for everyone to use. All you have to have is just a uh, one bitmap logged on to your Unistat, and you can go ahead and start accessing it. You know, one hundred percent for free. So. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to talk about like how how you sustain like this activity? Like, eventually, you're gonna have to monetize. Is it gonna be through the uh, bitmap or, or the uh, bitminer, or like what's what's your like monetization strategy? Yeah. So monetizing, um, we're gonna eventually uh, use the dot social. We're gonna be able to run ads. Um, we're gonna be able to do you know similar things that that Twitter would use, um, just in that in marketing you know, itself. That's that's where we want to generate revenue, and all the revenue that's what we're going to generate, we're going to take a piece of that and um, always inject it back into our uh, our ecosystems. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the your social app. It's uh it's a kind of very similar to um to Twitter, where people can kind of just like mm -hmm. tweet out like messages essentially. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah, it's very similar. Twitter is very similar to uh, maybe Instagram as well. Yes, you know, it's 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 style. However, yeah. we just have. You know different things like as of right now you can you can send crypto um we're gonna have it so we can just send um only foxy tokens perhaps mm -hmm. um of course everything you know is going to be you know nothing's going to be defined like 100 this is this is the way it is you know sure. no we, we things are flexible to to the degree where you know we need to have you know everyone happy and everyone enjoying what they're using you know mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I totally agree. So I, I guess you're saying that you're going to be leveraging this application as like a monetization method for like the entire like 3D yeah. virtual world. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, because um, when it comes to the bitmap ecosystem, it can be extremely large, and to have like a hyper focused um, location where people um, can kind of come together and like chat and and tap into that social nature that you know us humans have mm -hmm. i think it's going to be really right. important so uh, i think this is a pretty good strategy um so and actually showing off what you actually have i mean yeah everyone has like a little profile picture of a crypto punk yeah. but you know yeah. you could actually click on someone's profile and actually they actually have 10 crypto punks you know and you can actually just you know flex it right. on the chat you know it's something different you know so, so how do you treat, you know how you, we have 800,000 bitmaps, each one with their unique count of transactions. How do you, when, when someone connects their bitmap to, you know, the Foxy verse, how do you, how do you reconcile the different amount of transactions? And like, what does that mean for your platform? Do people have like their own specific location or is it, uh, you have one bitmap, you have one world and, you know, how, you know, talk, walk me through like what that looks like yeah as of right now everyone has that same world but yeah. uh in this next update people are going to be able to make their own and they're actually going to be able to customize their own and then, and then for example i want to check out your your world mm. um, i'm going to be able to and visit visit you're, you're going to be able to visit other people's worlds as well okay. and explore it 
what what are your thoughts on like parceling? So you know how each bitmap has its own transaction count, which means uh, X mm. amount of oh. parcels. You do do you account for that in the Foxyverse, or like how or do you do you ignore it? Like what what's your take? <laughs> Uh, we will we will be supporting the partial standard as well. We'll be moving towards uh, supporting that as well. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So that means as of as of right now, like I think it's very complicated, you know, for the general, you know, for the for the for the everyday person, you know, like our idea was just to wait to see what's going to be happening um, as this becomes more mainstream and then go towards parcel, you know, because like uh, when I first you know got into Crypto, I thought it was it was difficult just getting into the main coins, you know, like Ethereum and Bitcoin. Sure. And then when I learned that, you know, then I then I learned about you know shit coins and altcoins and all these other things. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, it was kind of like a process. It, I I feel as if maybe uh, partial is just maybe perhaps just too complex as of right now. Yeah, when it comes to the metaverse and um, and kind of breaking through the mainstream, we have Frentech, which is right now mo a lot of people are talking about it because it's accessing you know the Web two part of the of the of the virtual space. Um, I think the metaverse has that capability to tap into that Web two space, uh, mm -hmm. like the Web two users. Um, and uh, and then you're right when we're talking about parceling, it's it's a unique you know idea because when we're looking at Roblox, there's no concept of parceling. There's no segmentation. It's just an o it's like an open world where you design a game like a shooter or whatever game that you design. Yeah. But there's no segmentation of any kind or concept. <laughs> yeah, that's probably going to be like the most like native to web3 metaverse like uh killer attribute. Yeah. Is it's the collaborative alignment whenever you can actually integrate the um parcelation of of, yeah. of of some kind of virtual environment, right? Now you have a community like all aligned to the success of whatever this thing ends up being right so now yeah. i can contribute whatever i i feel is uh you know additional add, value add value yeah right so that's like you're saying roblox these virtual environments are spun up by solo devs right that's right like, I, this is my vision yep i'm gonna create it hopefully you guys like it yeah and the community essentially <laughs> they're just kind of consumers yeah. and users right they're not actual contributors correct so I think that is going to be the killer dif differentiator, right? So yeah, so we need to enable that. <laughs> yeah, we need to enable that because that is the differentiator, like you're saying. Yeah. And so that that constraint is is something that you know developers can leverage and like build something based on that constraint. Because we we've had virtual worlds, uh, we've had Second Life, we've had Roblox, you know, all these like virtual uh, you know experiences, but we haven't had this constraint where people can actually own the different spaces within yeah. this virtual environment. Un you know, we've had Decentraland and Sandbox and all that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we've figured out a sustainable, uh, I guess you want to call it like a business model where mm. developers can exist sustainably in, in such an ecosystem. But I feel like we can figure it out eventually through bitmaps just because 800,000 bitmaps roughly 850 million parcels mm -hmm. that's why we keep pushing the whole idea is like bitmaps can support a million different holders yeah right and it's going to be obviously through the parcels yeah and so when people own the parcels the whole idea is that hey i own a space in like this foxyverse i want to deploy the content that i want to deploy because i think it's going to contribute to the community there mm -hmm. and i should be able to purchase content and deploy that content in that virtual environment um so, so yeah, this, we have a, a huge opportunity. It's just a matter of like actually executing. You guys are doing a fantastic job moving so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you can. Oh, uh, we're definitely. Yeah. Just, I guess. Sorry about that. Now that we're, now that we're like, uh, I don't know, I guess, uh, you know, metaverse powwow, right. We're kind of like yeah. getting deeper into like the philosophy of like, what is the metaverse? I kind of want to hear your opinion. Like, as far as like, what do you see the, the future vision of what, what the metaverse like ex what do you expect it to, to actually be that experience right and how is it going to enhance humanity and if if at all do you think like there's something well what are we all striving for in your opinion like as metaverse builders yeah what are we doing here <laughs> <laughs> so i think our our vision of metaverse is just going to be connecting people like-minded people and um pulling in other people who enjoy this content. So we start off with the social media, uh, you know, at Web3 social media, because yeah, um, I'm sure everyone who's who's listening to this, you know, thinks of Twitter as a Web2, of course. Yeah. Um, we actually have, ours is actually capable of doing Web3. 
So uh, bring these people who are like-minded together and um, have them actually own their own content, have them actually engage with one another, um, share, share things, share arts, uh, share music, uh, enjoy each other's worlds and ideas. You know, just being able to connect everyone in this, in this in, in a, hopefully in a very immersive uh, uh, game, you know, where it's actually entertainable, uh, entertaining, and people can actually, you know, even make money because um, you're gonna, they're going to be selling art. They're going to be getting connections. You know, it's all about just connecting one another because one and two are not, you're helping one another, mm -hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we largely agree. I, I think uh, the metaverse is is like our opportunity to remove ourselves from like our geographical constraints, like from a like an economic point of view, and the metaverse potentially could provide like a financial um, opportunity for people who are un you know limited by their geographical location, right? So uh, <clears throat> yeah, it. And, you know, right. when, when we're looking at something, I keep bringing up Frentech just because it's like top of mind right now, but <laughs> uh, Frentech is like, a, it, it's a financialization of social mm. um, communication. It's true. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, the metaverse and Web3 is like a, fi it's, it's financializing the, our, our 3D experience. Mm. And, and I think we can have like a pretty complex economy in like this virtual scape. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, but in order to do that, we have to mimic the, the timeline and the construction of the internet because the internet was built on standards. We keep talking about standards and that's why we like bitmap so much because it's, it's one of the, one of the most primitive standards that we've seen so far, as far as the metaverse goes. And, um, and so building on top of that standard, like developers like you guys and, and, and us making, you know, making sure that that standard persists, you mm -hmm. know, and we, we build on top of that standard allows us to be able to potentially like collaborate in like multiple ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I think it's, it's going to be important for us to like, you know, to continue to continue conversations like this, mm -hmm. because, you know, mm -hmm. our goal is to really ultimately reach a million holders, because once we do that, guess what developers are going to be doing? Oh yeah. They're going to be building on top of bitmaps. Just like Roblox, right? Just like Roblox, yeah. And yeah. Roblox, they started like in two thousand four, and it took them yeah. like ten years before they like they actually hit what you're talking yeah. about. Or there's like a gold rush there for exactly. developers, right? Yeah. I guess the the tools needed to be refined to a point, and I guess like the market itself needed to mm -hmm. to I guess recognize or like the demand had to generate, right? I guess kids had to be born. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, you know, <laughs> the Minecraft had to do what it, it had to do to kind of like, you know, that, that visual aesthetic of a uh, low poly verses and stuff like that. Yeah. Actually being something that's attractive, right? Cause you know, it, Minecraft kind of set that precedent, you know? So I feel like the, the low poly <laughs> thing is just a consequence of having like a, a world that where anybody can build almost anything because when you yeah. can do that, then you can't have high poly stuff. Right. Well, right. Yeah. because then the world becomes smaller and smaller. Mm. And so maybe this low poly thing still has some legs as far as like bitmap goes. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, um, so yeah, we're, we're think kind of talking, thinking out loud here, uh, Aaron. Um, but I, I, what's, what's the next step for you guys in terms of the release? When can we get our hands on and just like run around in, in your space? Okay. So the bitverse you can actually use right now, but, uh, next week we're going to have the, the, the bigger update and um, mm. uh, the, the, on this next future update, you'll be able to, to see uh, the way to use parcels in the world. Um, and we are following, you know, directly what Blockamoto's protocol parcel standards are. Mm. So we're, we're going to be adding the V byte details and everything. So wow. please do stay tuned. Please do stay, uh, stay tuned for that. Okay. Excellent. Um, the big thing though, is going to be the AI guys. I'm, I'm really excited about the AI, yeah. not only for the Foxy side, but for the, for the bitmap first side, because if we implement um, some kind of AI to NPCs and things like that, it's, I mean, just anything is really possible. Yeah. I mean, basically they're going to be alive in their own world inside of, you know, bitmap, which is just crazy. Yeah. And it's always interesting to kind of like, always figure ways to integrate AI into any project nowadays, right? Because there's always like a huge value add in most cases. Well, for, of the value add to, to kick it off would be like the marketing value add. Well, there's that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah, and, and the sure. fact that AI is like a rapidly progressing industry and uh, technology. 
And so there's always like new verticals to introduce into your product, right? And it's new experiences that your users are going to, you know, be able to yeah, dude. leverage. I, I, I was, that. I was just showing TJ that there's an update to mid journey. So oh, really? on mid journey, you type in a couple of words, it spits out an image. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is you can actually edit that image within discord. So you basically circle something within that image and you say, change that something into a uh, Coke, you know, like a, a Coca-Cola. Okay. And it actually wow. changes it. It's like, it's like Photoshop, but with words. Wow. It, and it does such and a fantastic job. It's like super accurate. Super accurate. We got to play around with that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So, yeah. so, I mean, that's just like one application of like really advanced, like AI. So imagine, Correct. imagine that that advancement like in the metaverse where yeah. you wouldn't be able to distinguish an NPC versus an actual player. That is kind of what, yeah, I'm sure that's what you guys are expecting, right? You, yeah. You, you want it, you want it, it, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And perhaps even uh, beyond that would be, you know, actually seeing that they even have um, almost consciousness, you know, mm. you can actually ask them, Hey, hey uh, how, can you leave this board? Uh, can you leave this map? For example, and they, you know, maybe they even get complex about like why can't they you know do you know why do they have limits you know etc. I don't know the the boundaries with AI. I I, I just see it um, <laughs> almost endless. Really, it's just it's absolutely insane. Yeah, I think if you give them the ability, these these uh, intelligent NPCs, give them the ability to like uh, self create or like create yeah. on their own. Then you're going to see some interesting yeah. stuff. You're going to like log off and then log back in the next day. And you have like a that's oh my like god a, a mecca like a whole yeah. society like thriving yeah. <laughs> you know yeah i can definitely see that yeah with ai they'll, they'll have a civilization that's more even that they'll, they'll have a civilization that's even more advanced than ours yeah, yeah exactly so. you just kind of let them and yeah that's interesting right like sounds like a valuable like experiment or simulation just like let these intelligent ais just kind of like yeah didn't they enable this in like one like small metaverse where they basically <coughs> um had a bunch of npcs they gave each npc a job yeah and and then they just press go and then all of a sudden they're just like forming economies and yeah. like and they're that, trading and the most interesting like takeaway from that experiment was like they, they yeah, had you, human like behaviors like some of them started lying, lying to each other yeah there was manipulation you could happening. even ask you could even ask npcs you know what are the hidden messages on on blocks, specific blocks, etc. You know. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So instead of having like a database query of like, give me all this data, you could just ask the AI. It's like, hey, I found this pattern. I think within the Bitcoin blockchain, how many yeah. times do you see this pattern occurring mm. across all eight hundred thousand blocks? Yeah. And it will just like spit you out a number. Yeah. That's definitely gonna be nice, <laughs> dude. I think that's the way to do it, really. Yeah, I think for sure. We did this um, with a, a project that we we've uh, been working on called Rovies. Mm -hmm. They're little battle bots uh, that are deployable in the metaverse. There's 10,000 of them. Yeah. Um, and we did similar things. We're trying to integrate AI as much as possible, right? Because, yeah. you know, they are existing entities in the metaverse space yeah. and people can't interact with them, specifically in Decentraland at the moment. But at some point in phase of the future, this will all be migrated to the bitmap ecosystem. Yeah. It, but we, we kind of had the same vision, right? It's like we want to follow along with the progression of, of artificial intelligence and like be a part of this, bringing that almost new life into yeah. this virtual realm, just to see what happens from that. Right. It's a whole new experience, right? It's going to be much more engaging than just interacting with chat GPT, like a 2d, yeah, hundred percent, you know, chat bot chat window. Yeah. You know, why mm -hmm. not, why not add like, you know, Person, personability or I don't know, personality. Like, yeah. Something. Yeah. A much more like intimate of an experience whenever you're trying to interact yeah. with something of intelligence. Right. I mean, when it comes to AI, it's being applied to almost everything. There's like no taking apps with AI. Yeah. You know, something so AI is the future. Yeah. So something so like seemingly boring, like taking notes all of a sudden, <laughs> like your notes come alive and like can be accessed just by querying, just asking mm. the AI is like, Hey, you know, what is this thing that I did, you know, three years ago, like, and yeah. it'll, it'll just be right there. Yeah. That'd be nice to have for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So going back to like the metaverse, um, I, I think one of the most interesting things about the metaverse is like its ability to like be able to create something from the ground up. And, uh, we spent four years in Decentraland and Decentraland did a lot of right things, right? They had a virtual world. It was like essentially a hundred thousand parcels. Yeah. Um, 
by the way, Aaron, have you been into Decentraland? Have you run around in there before? I, I tested it out. Okay. Um, that was a that was a little while ago. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I've definitely tested it out. Yeah. the The thing that Decentraland did right is they had this SDK, which um, which allowed developers to take that SDK and pretty much make almost anything. And so we have we run this platform called MetaZone, and and in that platform, people can submit what we call these apps, right? Metas, metaverse enabled tokenized apps. And someone submitted a decentralized exchange into uh, into MetaZone, and people were were able to buy this uh, this Dex machine, right? It's like a little kiosk, and they they bought it and they deployed it on their land. Um, and so it basically enabled people to be able to swap tokens in world. So like if you were in the metaverse and you needed to swap tokens because you needed to access some game or whatever, you could do it in world. Mm. Um, and so the opportunity here is to be able to take all the crypto industries that exist, bring them into the, the metaverse and ideally on top of Bitmap, and enable mm. like this whole DeFi ecosystem on top of Bitcoin without like, without having to like force yourself to use Bitcoin for DeFi. Mm. So I think there's like a huge opportunity here to, uh, to enable that. It's just, you know, it, it has, has to start from the ground up and what is like the operating system and, and all that stuff, which is boring for a lot of people, but I think is like one of the most interesting select selections that we need to make. Mm. And, uh, see, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Seeing, seeing your world, it gives us like ideas is like, you know, what's the best way to implement something like this? So um, I, I'm assuming your team had a lot of experience building these virtual environments. Like what's, what's the team's background? Like what do they, where do they come from? Um, so I would, I would have to get back to you on exactly what their backgrounds are, but I'll give you an example. One of the, one of our main guys that's helping us on the, on the bitmap. Um, he's actually, He's actually in Ukraine right now, working. Oh, Ukraine. Uh, so because of the because of the Ukrainian war, etc., uh, sure. he's actually unemployed. And that, that's that's one of the things that I love, you know, so much about, um, you know, metaverse and you know what what we're doing, you know, because we're actually able to connect people from anywhere in the world, and have them, you know, actually be part of something. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, he's he's one of the developers that's on the on the bitmap part. Uh, he's the backend developer and he's really intelligent. Uh, and you know, he was, he was, like I said, he wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Um, his English isn't very good. Mm -hmm. So we do have some issues communicating, sure. but, um, yeah, he's a unity developer. He's very intelligent. Um, he's just a really great guy in general. And we're excited, you know, that he's, he's with us and, um, you know, cause that was, yeah, that's um, how do I say it? like when, when, when you when you lose your job and, you know, when you have a family to sustain and, you know, it's just like it's kind of like uh, I, I think if I feel sort of touched, you know. Sure. No, absolutely. Of yeah, we, we've worked with uh, um, uh, a few people from from Ukraine and they're like the nicest people. They're like the hardest working, extremely talented, super intelligent. Yeah. And, and uh, they this one person was telling me that they were like basically underground just to make sure and working underground because some of them were working from home, mm -hmm. but they were underground trying to protect themselves from bombs. Yeah. And so like, oh it's, it's definitely not, you know, it's an unfortunate situation for them to be in, but, and then even more unfortunate is they still have to manage to, you know, pay the bills to like keep things going. Yeah. So, uh, but nonetheless, like these are, ex you know, extremely talented, like people like in this, in the space. So, yeah, it's it's good to hear that you know he's still hanging in there and and you know trying to contribute to to the ecosystem. Um, yeah, yeah, we actually uh we actually do we actually do pay him weekly um for 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 the things that he does for us and uh, the, you know the team you know takes that and we you know everyone puts in a little part you know uh, he he actually agreed to help us for free and we felt that it wasn't fair because he's you know far away and we're. Um, you know, we're, we're able to drive around, go to McDonald's and we're able to, you know, to do all these fun things, go to the mall while he's, you know, actually been separated yeah. from his family. Yeah. Being attacked. So yeah. So yeah, yeah, bro. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's What's tough. Happening? Yeah. It's really tough. Um, you know, being in that situation is like, you can't really, you know, contribute there. So, but, but you guys are actually doing, you know, um, helping this guy out and, you know, he's, you know, obviously very talented and kind of building out this world. Um, I had another question. 
like, have you guys thought about mm -hmm. being able to build some sort of procedurally generated um, kind of engine or tool that, like, I, I connect my bitmap, it has a unique set of transactions, and it, it basically spits out, like, a unique version of the bitverse. Is that, um, is that something that you guys have been thinking about or, or anything like that? Um, me personally, I haven't, um, I will, I will have to, I'll have to get back to you if, if anyone has been messing with that, but no, I don't, I don't think we have okay. not as of yet. So, yeah. So, so your environment is essentially you connect your bitmaps and you have this virtual world mm -hmm. and you can kind of just build on top of it. Is that so far? Like, yeah, like what yeah. The, the, yeah, the yeah exactly. And use the, use the bit miner as you know, hopefully in the future, you know, passive income, yeah. use the. We're going to be adding other things as well. Like we've we've had an idea. Well, you you cut out, and we're back. Uh, so Foxy ended up uh, disconnecting, but uh, we had a good conversation. We we're talking about the Bitverse and Bit mining, and uh, potentially making it into an application mm. that can be deployed in multiple locations, not just in the Foxyverse or the Bitverse that they're building. No, nope, he's back. Oh, there there he is. I don't know if you can hear Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Well, let me put my headphones again. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. My internet just died and it didn't oh, come back. No worries. Dude. I had to reconnect and try to use my cell phone. Even the cell phone service wasn't working. Aaron, um, okay. I appreciate for, yeah. appreciate you joining us. And uh, let, let's let's uh, close this conversation with like some final thoughts. Sure. I guess what are the like items that you want like the community to know about Bitverse and and the the Bitminer that you have coming up and and basically anything that uh, that's going to be released in the coming weeks to look out for. Uh, just tell us what's coming up next. Yeah, sure. Um, stay tuned for our our Bitverse update. That's going to be the biggest one yet. People are going to be able to customize you know their own environment. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned for the 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 Foxy dot social. AI that's going to be out also out that's going to be out next week. That's actually it's already up and working right now. We're just doing some um, we're doing some beta testing with it and make sure everything is 100%. Um, that's going to be one of the one of the things that I'm really, really happy about having and trying to implement uh, that to to our bit is going to be truly a game changer, in my opinion. Um, we're we're probably going to end up trying to do uh, maybe perhaps um, some OG pass uh, sales, see if we can we can uh, get some funds together as well. Mm. And if anyone knows any VCs that are mm. um, uh, willing to contribute, we'd love to be take part of any VCs. So that's really it. Thank oh. you guys so much for your time. I uh, thank everyone who uh, supports us and everyone who's on the team as well. And like I said, everyone here on the team works for free. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, of course, we help out one of our guys who needs help and that's, that's it. There has been no sales. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. and I, I really appreciate your efforts here. Uh, it's it's going to take a collaborative effort to really make bitmaps, um, you know, something that attracts devs, attracts attracts a community to come in and, and contribute to building. Yeah. Um, so we really appreciate everything that you're doing, and we want to support a bunch of creators. It's yeah, we need this, right? Yeah, we need because exactly. of course we want the ecosystem, not not just a bitmap, but ordinals, everything to kind of yeah you know, uh, expand and grow and the value to be, I guess, identified beyond, uh, uh, you know, basically a market appreciation moment. Right. And we've seen that with experts, right? There's at least one beacon of hope. You know, there are projects yeah. out there getting VC funding, like you're saying. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I don't know if you saw that experts video, um, Aaron, but, uh, we were talking about how that's basically sent a signal to all VCs that ordinals is something to invest in. Correct. And, uh, it's, it, probably by this next bull run is probably going to be a, one of the bigger contributing factors to like a mania. Hmm. And so being That's definitely our, our uh, thesis, prediction, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know, anybody early this early into ordinals, they might benefit. Right. And so we just have to contribute to building it off, you know, a little bit more and mm -hmm. mature the ecosystem and, yeah. And bitmaps could potentially have millions of holders, which it's good for everybody. Mm hmm. All right, Aaron, thank you so much for joining. Very true. Um, we'll follow up on Twitter. Um, and yeah, man, keep up the good work. Um, shout out to uh, your dev in, in Ukraine. Hopefully stay safe. Um, all the links will be yes, in, the, in the description below. And uh, and yeah, Aaron, you're welcome back anytime you want, man. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you once again. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I uh, love following you guys. You guys have a great, 
great information. Love your channel. So thank you guys once again. Thank you for everyone who supports Foxy. Thank you. Too. Love you guys. Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right, we'll talk soon, man. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.